Uh, hello, this is David Birch at Star Pass School of Navigation with a, uh, another uh, short video on the use of Open Captain um, eChart program, which we are now using in our online uh, navigation courses. So, um, as, as mentioned in a few uh, of the earlier videos about this program, you get the mo you get the smoothest uh, interaction with the chart views if you download a, re a large region of charts or for sure enough uh, charts to cover the whole region you're looking at. If you look at just one chart, then things look a little bit unusual near the edges. But they have a very nice uh, chart view app, I mean a chart downloader uh, plugin, uh, which we've discussed elsewhere. And so I have these charts all uh, loaded already. And this video is about some simple navigation, chart plotting, navigation exercises it's not uh, about the charts. But each of these outlines is a chart that's installed and can be zoomed in on. This happens to be where we're located here in Seattle. That's where I'm sitting at the moment, right there. Okay, so, uh, and then these show the different charts. And uh, again, we cover that elsewhere. So I'm going to, uh, uh, first of all, uh, talk about scaling. Scaling and uh, zooming and so forth. And so I have a mouse here and I have a left click and I'm dragging. That left click and drag works fine. Or you can uh, use the arrow, arrow keys uh, up and down. I'll come back to that. And so to zoom, the easiest way and certainly on a boat underway, we found that the keys are, the keystrokes are often the best way. So you can zoom the charts um, by a plus key. Plus, plus and minus like that, and just uh, just as a detail here, this is a scale here of um, I forget exactly how much that is in miles. We could figure that out very easily. Well, uh, well, here I'm going to zoom ahead. If I hit the M key, hit the M. That's a measurement key. Oh, is it going to let me do that? No. Okay, I'll escape. Let me not do that right now. But anyway, here is, a, here is a scale of something. It's a certain number of miles. And then if I hit the plus key, that makes it bigger and bigger and minus, minus, minus. So the plus keys, the plus keys change the scale by a factor of two. So they're zooming this by a factor of two. Now, another thing you can do besides that is hold down the Alt or Option key. Th I'm on a PC. Actually, I'm on a Mac. I'm running the PC version inside of a Mac. Uh, the PC, as I've noted elsewhere, uh, with many navigation programs, and it's also true with Open Captain, the PC version has a few more features than the Mac. Not enough to distract for Mac users, but, um, but there are a couple. Yeah, which we'll get to later. But for now, uh, I'm actually running this on a PC inside of a Mac using a Fusion. And so, but if you hold down the uh, Option or Alt key and then hit plus and minus, well, let me go minus. Now this is, look at that bar over the side. Now the steps are something like 90%. So it's a 10% adjustment with this way. So you take away that and you're going a uh, full factor of two on the scaling with a plus and minus key. If you hold down this, uh, you get a plus, you get 10%. So that's a nice way to do minor steps on the zoom in with the keys. Um, also in the particular version I've got on Windows 10, it makes a little ding sound when you do it for whatever that's worth. So that's one thing with regard to the scaling. And again, you can right click and drag the charts or you may find when you're on a boat that the actual key strokes are, are a, more, a better way to do that. One of the features here that will be valuable to turn on is one of their, um, this is a dashboard called, uh, well I've called it cursor position. But you can just go to the dashboard, and I got to there by right, well, actually, yeah. So uh, these are the different, the different dashboards that I have defined here. One's called cursor position. See, you can call this anything you want to, but right now it's called cursor position. And all that's doing is uh, reading out for us the location of the cursor. There are other uh, ones, for example, preferences when you're navigating. Uh, you might want to show this one. 
right here. That's uh, actually showing your live. Oops, it just got dragged in there. I want that. It's showing your actual position and then your compass when you're moving. And here is a view of the satellite intensities that's being uh, that's being read that's being read. But that's not one that we need. And again, so the other thing about this video is I'm just going to discuss a couple techniques that are useful for working our practice exercises or for chart practice or uh, translated to being underway. It would be uh, quick ways that you would read the chart, uh, maybe to plan a trip or to um, uh, to check a GPS uh, or radar with range and bearing. And again, you would do it slightly differently, and we'll come back with another video on that. If you had your actual boat, the functions are a little different than here with our practice. But now I want to explain how you can use this to work a practice problem from our workbook. So uh, let's start right out. And I got the cursor. And then, uh, OK, so I'm going to zoom in here. And let's say we have, here's uh, two buoys. And I just want the range and bearing from here to here. Range and bearing from here to here. So one way to do that is you can just right click here and say measure, or just press the M key. So if I go to the keyboard and press M, it's turned that thing on. Then I can go here. And of course, you can, you can zoom in. Um, you know, you can zoom in to be sure you've got it in the right spot. I'm going to hit escape. That erases everything. I start again. I click here. I have to uh, uh, t turn, on the, uh, turn on the M and then click here. So I'm right square where I want to go. Now I'm going to go out a little bit and find that buoy. Oh, here's the buoy we wanted here. Now I'm going to zoom back in and then roll up to that buoy. Okay, so that's the distance I wanted to measure. And you see, if I just hold this right here, I can read it, but it's not very good. Uh, three, it's, I can read it 3.16 miles or something. And once you click it and go away, it's now reading something else. So in a sense, even though that measure tool is there, that's not necessarily the best way to read uh, uh, read these distances for one of our practice problems or for a chart problem. You might be better off, in fact, using the, um, using the route tool. And you can turn on, you can make a route like this, can see, or do control R. Control R will do the same thing. Now you can then start here, click there, and then go up to here. And then just click that. And then say escape. But now you've got that line on there, and if you bring your cursor up to it, you see, I can read that distance. That distance now 4.88. Oh, it's got a lot farther away. <laughs> I, must have, I must have been measuring the point to that one, uh, actually, last time. Well, is that really true? Uh, what was it? 3.1 or something last time. Yeah, 3.1. Okay, so let's go. Let's go up to this guy. All right, so, in a, so to measure distances, uh, e, uh, the measure distances uh, uh, between t range and bearing between two points, in a sense, you're better off using the, um, using the route tool. Now, another, another technique, I'll do one more technique here. Um, now, to get rid of that, you just right-click it and delete it. But let's just say uh, we've got another one. Let's say my boat's out here somewhere, and I see this buoy at some distance. Let's say I see it at bearing, I better write this down, 033. I see it at 033 true, 033 true, and then at, um, at a distance, say, 2.35 miles. So from the radar, I see this buoy that distance away. So now, how would be a nice way to plot that? Well, one easy way is just go in here, right here, and drop a mark right there. Did I drop a mark? Proper, I must have. So I dropped a mark, and then go down here, get rid of this, this, go down here and say, show range ring, show one range ring for now, and let's make that range ring our distance off 2.35. That's one, that's one way, okay. So we've marked then, um, there's everywhere that's, uh, that's everywhere around that buoy that's the right distance off, 2.35 miles, precisely, right? Very precisely. So then we need a direction 033. 
Now, some, some uh, programs will let you actually draw a, ra draw a range line and then actually move the range line. Just pick up the range line and move it like parallel rulers. This particular program does not do that. Uh, some do, and it's kind of nice, but it, it w there's lots of ways around that. Uh, so we got 033. So what we would do then is let's just start, let's see, say uh, control R, and we're going to make a, and come right out of here, and then uh, say yes. That just said, do you really want to start right on that waypoint? And I said yes. Yeah. So let's just go out here somewhere and go to 033. So I'm starting a route, it's 033. Bang, right there. Whoops, is that right? Uh, okay. 033 and then just bring then just come back down that line like this this is just one way to do it and just stop there and say escape so there's your position this position right here is um, is uh, 033 uh, at 2.35 miles from this buoy so you got there and if you wanted to you could uh, drop a mark there as well so that is that technique and let's see, I think maybe I'll stop here. That was uh, two types of navigation techniques and we'll come back and add more later on.